Right, let's discuss, so we're gonna do some bias binding later, but let's discuss scissors. Those of you that were with me last week, I said that I bought a new pair of scissors. Now these are my Fiskars. They are brand new and I will say, because I'm very proud, I got ID'd for these. I had to uh, I had to prove that I was over 18. I don't know if it's over 18 or over 21, I don't know. But it was quite funny. It did really did make my day. Morning, Susan. So I bought these because the, the smaller version of these that they're downstairs in my bag, I did some hand sewing last night. They were no longer cutting right at the tip and I wonder, I'm sure lots of you have the same problem. So I bought some brand new ones. I bought them on the Thursday. I used them for a little bit when I was uh, prepping on the Friday and then I used them with you on the Saturday, I think. And already after just two weeks, they are blunt. Now as an ex-hairdresser, I know that this Blunt your scissors. You shouldn't do that. We were taught that right at the beginning when uh, when we were... Morning, Becky! Right at the beginning of uh, my hairdressing journey, okay? So you mustn't do that with your scissors when there's nothing inside. But already, I was trying to do some snipping today, so... I'll let you see the sound. Look. See the sound. Hear the sound. Do a close-up. Let's just... I'll just get it in short. There we go. So... Already, oh, it did that time, but already they're not wanting to cut. So, I mean, these are Fiskars, you know, these are, these are a, a good make. Now, this is canvas. There you go, they're snipping there, but they're, they're snipping right at the tips. Uh, uh, so they're not actually, they're not working every time. So let me know what make you use and a make that you're really really happy with is it just that i need to get my husband to use the whetstone and sharpen them once a week is that the issue because what happened what what you then have to do is you have to go in with all of your scissors go to this point and then snip up to so i've got a little line here look that i need to snip up to and if i use the whole of my scissors like that morning deborah then i've got a risk so I've got my bias binding on the back. I've got a risk of then going over the thread, over the cotton, and it not happening, um, you know, me, me cutting straight through. But I will go back and read all your comments, and then hopefully you can have a little conversation about that, and maybe you can recommend different scissors to everyone else. So these haven't been used for paper because they have my... If I put ribbon on it, everybody knows that they shouldn't be using my scissors. These are just for thread cutting or fabric cutting and also I bought some snips because I was I was told that these are for thread cutting if you use your normal scissors a lot for thread cutting you can just blunt them as I said as a head as an ex hairdresser I know that if you are doing this action with your scissors and there's not a lot in your scissors then it will blunt them so that is obviously why that works so I have bought snips so it's not even that I've been using them to cut my thread but I'm a little disappointed that they didn't they didn't last Okay, one more thing to show you. Were you here when I made this? Do you remember this one? There you go. I still haven't finished. So these are called whips. These are called works in progress, or they are called UFOs, which is um, unfinished object. So this was, now I've been using this. I've been putting my tea on it. It was, the, it was a reverse applique that I made for my husband. But all I have to do is just sew the top up a little ladder stitch or so all the way round and it would be finished and I still haven't is that you or is it just me I'm hoping that it isn't just me I just I noticed it on my desk and I thought right I'm going to show you guys I'm going to confess right we are looking at binding let me just take all my snips away and pop them into my thread catcher now we are looking at binding today and let me just show you this is my bias bind well or binding maker actually we always say bias binding but quite often we're just using binding so bias binding is where you cut across a whole piece of fabric and you then have your fabric will stretch much much more because it is cut on the bias that's the whole point but you can just have binding that isn't um that isn't cut like that so 
what we're going to do, I've been asked how to make binding and I've been asked, morning Emma, I've been asked how to make binding not so, can't remember the description that Susan used, but she said that it wasn't going straight. Now, people say they can't get this into here, okay? It's probably gonna work first time because I don't want it to, but it can, you can have problems. The trick is you need a point, okay? So once you pop this in this way, you can then see it under here. You pull this forward and then you are out. There we go. So let's have a talk about binding. So when you're making your own binding, which is what I've done with this, when you buy binding, whether it's a bias binding or normal binding, it isn't two inches long at wide if you check so what will happen is you will look at a pattern and the pattern will say to to use two inch binding but when you actually get your binding home nine times out of ten i don't want to say ten you know i don't, I don't want to say that 100 percent of the time it isn't quite two inches wide so when you're making your own don't cut it to two inches the reason being let me show you on um, what we're going to do is we are going to go back to our skirts that we made. Do you remember we made some um, we made some apron skirts? And what we're going to I want to show you. Let me just show you close up on this one. So can there? This is what people were saying. Could I show them how to not get this puckering effect? This binding is two and a half inches wide. So is it because it's two and a half inches wide, you've got too much fabric in there, even though this is cut on the bias, it's the same fabric as this one. I'm going to show you that this one works and this one doesn't. So that could be a reason that you are making your own binding and you are cutting it too wide and that's why it's not working. I'm just going through a few different reasons as to why it might not work. What we need to do is cut it, as I've just said, slightly smaller so i did mine so just under two inches i didn't go too far because i was i wanted proving my theory and the other thing you need to do we're going to go to the other camera again i'm going to bring in my iron and we've got this one already in so let's just i'll show you right from the beginning again here you go so we pop this pointed end in here and then you can use your nail. If you don't have a nail, you can use a pin. Bring in Nan's cushion. Just push that down. Can you see? It's really, really easy. Or it should be. And then turn it over and you need to bring in your iron if you have one. If you don't want, if you don't have an iron in your sewing room and you don't want to use an iron, what you can do is you can Finger press, if you're using a cotton or a poly cotton, finger press, fold over and clip or pin. You don't have to use an iron. Okay, I'm going further down. Finger press, fold over and pin. But generally I think what people do is they use is they use an iron. So let's take it out again. Bring that through. I'm hoping that if I show you this a couple of times, I have a couple of questions that I'm asked a lot about bias binding, zips, and I've forgotten what the other one was. But there's some things I get asked more often than others. There we go. So I've got my I've got my little iron here. I'm going to open this up. And the other thing, and I'm sure Becky and Emma will back me up here. What you met, what you'll find, I'm gonna do a real close up here, with your binding from the sh from the shops, store bought, shop bought, you will have a gap in the center. Now I know that Becky puts this in her patterns and she says if you're making your own, don't go all the way up to the center. When you're adding fusible fleece or anything in here to make your straps, your bag straps or anything firmer, she says don't go up to the center. And it's the same with binding. You don't want to go all the way up. So if when you're pulling this through, start here, what you do is you pop your iron on the top, 
Try and do it so you've got a better angle. Pop your iron on the top, you pull this out, but if your binding is meeting perfectly in the centre, then just take your fingers and try and get, I know we like to work in inches, but try and get two millimetres gap in, in the centre maybe. If you've only ever made your own binding, go and buy some shop bought binding and then have a look at it and see the difference. See the difference in it compared to what you're making. So can you see, I'm just moving it open with my fingers like that. And again, many people do binding differently. You find your own way. This is just how I found it works. The way I became, I'm not going to say an expert, but the way that I got over my challenges with my binding is I made a pot holder for Sewing Street. I can't remember when it was, it was a couple of months ago. And it was a circle one and I was so worried because I knew it was going to be, so many people were going to see this. And I was really, really worried. So what I did was I did it so slowly, really, really, really slowly. And I used the tricks that I'm going to show you with the iron and I used everything I did. I, I researched, I read blogs. If it isn't just YouTube where you can get information from, you can get them from blogs. There you go. I do, there's a podcast that I listen to and they say when something is, fortuitous or there is a something you're saying something and then you remember something else and it's perfectly balanced into what you're saying they go ding 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 so I don't, I don't know if it's copyrighted but I've just gone ah oh, aha another idea when um when our website is live we are going to have a blog so in social me on social media I try and do a post every day a couple of posts when I'm sewing something I like to share it with you I'm in here on my own most of the time and it's nice to share what I'm doing with you. So what I will be doing is taking pictures, showing you my journey, showing what I'm doing, and I'll be sharing that with you every day over on the blog. The blog is actually live now. The website with the shop and everything in it isn't quite live, but the blog is. So I will put a link down to that. So that's a good, that's a good thing to, um, to remember. So yes, going back to this, we have our little gap here, and then, When I needed to know all about binding and not be scared of it, and I had to make my own, I read blogs, I read blog posts, I watched YouTube videos. Again, there aren't that many Facebook lives that you can watch, which is why it's good to watch Becky and Emma. And I know Lizzie Curtis does a live, and I know Debbie Shaw does as well. So there we go, all folded and perfect. But if you do have a question, lots of people will do, they will have different ideas. They've all come from different places. Emma's background is in costume making and Becky has made so many bags for other people before she was making all of her own. And my experience is I was taught when I was at school and then I've just made my own things and I've learned via YouTube. I didn't have, I have had one sewing class that was to make a dressing gown and I loved it. I really loved it and I learned lots of things. So maybe take a class. There's so many ways, but get the information from many different places because many different people will say something completely different and you'll think, oh, and then you'll take that bit from there and you'll take that bit from there. It's a good idea. It's a good idea to, to find your information out in many different places. That's the amazing thing with the internet that you can do that. So can you see, now if you had shop bought binding, this is what it would look like. It would be folded like that around they usually have it like this I long time since I bought it it usually looks like this you get it like that and then when you open it up you have a point at the end because where it's come off where they've cut it and then you've got your little gap in the middle okay we are going to move on to our pocket people that were here last um, last week, this is what we made. We made an apron and I said I wanted to put pockets on it and somebody asked if they could have a demo on binding and how to not let it pucker. What I wanted to do was put a pocket on the front of here, but because this is reversible, if I put it straight on there, I'm going to have stitching on the back. You can do that. You could do is have one pocket on this side, one pocket on that side, match them up perfectly don't quite know how you would do that match them up perfectly and sew them and then they would be in the right places but what I decided to do I did not drop that on the floor 
what I decided to do was unpick this one. So this is the one that I actually made when I was with you. And I do want to make it longer. If anyone made theirs and have decided that it isn't long enough, because I use strips, all I'm going to do is add, I've got the binding already folded up here, but all I'm going to do, I'm going to add two more strips to the side of both sides. And that's going to make it wider because I just felt it didn't flare out as nice. And all I'll do is I will go to this length and then I shall continue up and then I would follow the tutorial as I did, as, as I'd filmed it before, and then putting the white band on the top. So if you want to make yours bigger, I think we had 11 of these. I'm going to do more than that. So you can do that if you want to. But you can add your pockets. If you wanted to, I knew I shouldn't have put it on the floor. If you want to, what you can do is you can unpick just this bit, and then you'll have an opening here. You can then attach your pocket that way, sew that one up, because you won't be touching this side, sew the pocket on that side, and then re-sew this bit if you want to. That is how you can do it. And then you just do a top stitch all the way around, which we were going to do anyway. Let's go back to the other camera. But I am gonna, I'm not gonna use that one now. This is my pocket shape. You can see that's my hand. All I did was I drew around my hand. This reminded me of being at nursery. It's so lovely. I drew around my hand and then decided how big my pocket needed to be. So the idea is when my hand, when this will sit against here and then my, my fingers will sit in my pocket like that. I'm not going to give you a pattern because your hands will be different sizes and you know you want to draw your own. All I did was then I did half an inch there half an inch here and then just drew a straight line and went all the way around so you can see the shape of my my little pocket what i did next is i took this was actually happened to be folded over but it doesn't need to be it was just how i positioned the fabric so you can just do two pieces of fabric you can see that sits here and then what I tried to do is I tried to do a seam allowance because I felt this wasn't big enough. What you can do is you can draw it big enough and then you won't need to worry about your seam allowance. But you can see there is a, a seam allowance around here. I have done another one here. Now the reason I've done this one, I know it matches the other one, but this is just because I've got lots and lots of spare fabric. What you can, what I, what I had, what I wanted to do was sew this and I've got a brown in my top thread and I am going to sew this so that you can see because I know last week people were saying white on white they really couldn't see hopefully you will be able to see much more today I'm going to bring in our sewing machine I said this last week but everyone is loving this new camera angle there she is I had a little trouble with noise earlier today and I couldn't figure out why the sewing machine was making so much noise and then I realised I had two of my little clips that I use and they were stuck underneath. They were right under here and this was rocking backwards and forwards and it was making so much noise and I couldn't figure out why. And then I realised it's because I had two clips underneath. So do be careful when you're using a mat. What had happened is they'd fallen off this side, gone underneath. And when I move my machine around all day, that's what happens. It just kind of... Um, they got stuck. So I have my pattern piece. Now you will either have two pieces that you will lay wrong sides together. Mine is right, is white, but it still has a wrong side. And we're going to sew this wrong sides together. You may have a seam down here. So there is my pattern piece. If you cut out two of these, just put them wrong sides together and then you'll be sewing down there. I'm not sewing down there because I don't have I don't need to. And then what we need is to leave this top bit open. So this is called bagging out. For those of you that don't know the term, we're going to lay that here. I'm gonna bring in my, I can see lots and lots of comments, people telling us what scissors they use. And I can see Fiskars is the name and I did use Fiskars. Um, those, are, those are the ones I've got. There we go. So needle down, and I'm going to use quite a short stitch length here. I'm going to go down to a 2.0, because when I turn this right sides out, I don't want to have any little stitches 
showing on here so if your stitch length is too long that's what can happen sometimes I'm just going to back stitch to the end and then I'm going to do a curve when you're sewing a curve just try and keep it steady not too fast not too slow I'm going to go all the way around and then we will get to our bias binding part of the sewing of bias binding I'm going to stop here and what I'm going to do I'm going to turn that around can you see it's not matching up? So I need to go and do another stitch. Still not matching up. Another stitch. There we go. And then I just need it so that it's going straight again. And then just keeping it steady. Going all the way around. I need both hands just to, I'm not pulling it, I'm just guiding it. A little bit from seam allowance there. Going all the way to the top. One more, and then I'm going to back stitch. There we go, and I will get rid of my thread. There we go. So we're going to move the machine out of the way, and then we will pop this one back up out of the way, ready to use again later. And then we've got our lovely space. Let's bring this in. So Jackie says that those are the ones that she thinks that she has. So, and they were, I'm not going to say that it's all relative, I know, but I felt they were quite expensive. They weren't a cheap pair of scissors. And yet they still, as I said, aren't working as well as I want them to. So this is what I needed them for. Just, so if you have the same problem with yours, then what you need to do is use this part of your scissor, but try not to go all the way up. You need to go quite far because you want this to spread out because it's on a curve. You want this bit to spread out. That one hasn't even cut, look. You want it to spread out like that once you've turned it right sides out. Morning, Barbara. Just seeing name is popping up so nice to have you join us on a saturday morning it does actually look gorgeous out there i'm hoping that we could go outside and enjoy it today there we go just going just on the curved parts because that's the bit that you need and then we're going to use our special way of folding um, our corner so just going all the way around. Now, for those of you that haven't seen this before, I am not going to clip my corners and I'm going to show you why. I watched uh, a video quite a long time ago and what they did is they folded, can you see where my thread is? I've used a very dark thread. I wouldn't normally do this on a white fabric. This isn't the pocket I'm going to keep on the apron that I'm making. Can you see, if I, if I pull that round now though, that spreads. I will show you on the on the other camera. So what we do, we I don't cut off my corners. What I do is I fold this piece down right where that thread is and then I get my iron. Let's bring this back in. Move my scissors out of the camera view. So I've bought in my iron. There you go. And I'm going to iron that down. But can you see if I show the camera when this goes around that curve, can you see it's opening? So therefore, when it goes around the curve, it's going to hopefully give us a smoother curve. Here's the other side. So I'm going to fold this back. There we go. And then I'm going to fold this one back. And this works most of the time. It de kind of depends on A, whether you're on live TV, <laughs> or B, the thickness of your fabric. But this fabric is lovely. It's a very um, heavy co uh, quilt and weight cotton. And when I've done this before, it's been amazing. Now you need to find your top, fold this down. A little bit 
making it as even as you can and then we're going to iron that bit now what I did find with the top when I was trying to sew the other one this is now a very bulky corner so what you can do with this corner is you can take off that sort of just a little triangle just so you've got a little point here and that will help you when you turn that over you can see already there's less in there the other thing you can do is you can open up the seam so open up the seam I'm just going to do it with my fingers fold that down and already that is a much there's much less bulk in there and then I'm going to iron again so once you've prepped all your fabrics and all your corners you don't have to do it that way if it's the first time you're doing it just just practice it a couple of times now I've got my finger inside I'm taking hold of my corner I'm putting my thumb on the corner and then I'm just going to push it through the hole and then you will need a pokey tool now this fabric is lovely you can actually hear how thick it is you can actually hear the um the fibers in there and what what you will need is a pokey tool so let's lay this back down and i'm just going to pull all of my seams out so can you see even with that really dark thread that's not going to be quite so bulky uh, it's not going to show and also it's not going to be quite so bulky where is my so this is my poking tool we're going to push that down into the center and I'm going to push up that corner Now remember we didn't take any of the bulk off we didn't do anything to it all we're doing now pushing that out and that is a pretty sharp that's a pretty sharp corner isn't it considering we didn't take any of the bulk off and I'm going to do the same with this one. I do love the sound of that fabric. Now because this is a very thick bulky fabric and because I'm filming it live my little trick hasn't worked. But all you need to do is just go back. Maybe. Okay so she has the same problem with her small fiskers, scissors. Hmm. I don't know what the answer is but what I'm going to do now is I am going to snip across that corner and then just do a V down those sides did I just cut my nail then I think I might have done that won't help my scissors will it maybe do you still have your inherited Janome pinking shears I do but I have a confession are you ready for this those of you that watch sewing street we just make lots of noise so this is Betsy Betsy is 50 plus years old she's my favorite pair of scissors okay but when I went to sewing street these I literally I packed so fast I had no idea until I got home so apologies to the studio, I need to take these back. But, but do you know what? Listen to those. These are stiffer and they don't cut as well. Betsy is sharper and is working better even though she is... Is she a pensioner? If she's 60, is she a pensioner? Um, we're not quite sure how old she is, but yeah, she is, she is fairly old. There you go, I'm poking all of these out now. And then we will have our smooth pocket and then we just need to poke this back in. And because we took that bulk off, that isn't quite as bulky as it would have been. Try it without. You know, this is all about learning. And the best way to learn is to make a mistake or to do it not quite perfectly. I'm just going to push that out. So try it the, um, the, without all of the little tips that I've shown you. Or I've told you about try doing it that way and then you can then add the little hints that you um, that you've learned and then you can see if it worked there we go 
It's easily done. Thank you, Barbara. What I need to do is go and have a coffee with Barbara and then she can take them back for her show. That's probably a good idea. Now I'm going to bring in the binding that we made. There we go. And it's open slightly. And I'm going to use a pencil for this. I know lots of you will have beautiful marking tools that you use. Now what you need to do, and I wouldn't use it, I wouldn't measure with it, okay? Um, I wouldn't use an actual measurement, a ruler. I would, I would use your binding because you. This is going to be completely original to you. So, you need to lay your binding. Now we need to make sure it's longer than this is the curve we're using. It's longer than this curve, so you need to be up here. Put a mark so you know where the top is. To press harder because my pencil's not sharp. So there is the top. Okay and move back open out your binding and lay it against the the edge of your fabric and then sort of just gauge it is going to fit i know that that's going to fit so close it back up now you know how wide that is going to be and then you can put a little mark there if you want to now you will have a beautiful marking tool, I'm sure. It's going to be the same all the way around. So I'm just, there you go. And then what you need to do is bring in your iron and don't have your, let's make sure you can see this. Do not have your steam on. So with your binding closed, and I'm gonna match up there, what we're going to do is we're gonna follow this new line that we've just drawn, we're gonna follow it around. So, clicking, that's straight, that's slightly curved, that's slightly curved, and all I'm doing is moving the fabric just a little tiny bit. And my hands are in the way, I want you to get a really good angle of this. Just wondering if I turn it that way, that's a better angle. Can you see I'm following the curve that I have just drawn and I'm just going round. Try it this way. Just want to make sure you can see this. There we go, that's a better angle. So can you see now without doing anything, without holding it, without pinning it, my binding is staying curved. Do it again so you can see against that line and take your time I'm twisting it again now there's a little pucker there but that pucker is going to disappear as I pull the binding round the other thing you need to make sure is you don't open this bit okay so just keep keeping making sure this bit is staying down it does take a long time but it will be worth it in the end because your binding will be perfect. I'm going to put it back at the top. I'm going to move that round. It's harder for me because I'm doing it on camera and I'm trying to get it so that you can see. When you do yours, you won't find it this hard. I'm, I don't want to make it look hard because it really, really isn't. But it really is a great thing to do. There. Okay. There we go. And it's hot. <laughs> there we go. There we are. Hoping that is going to stay there. Pretty much. There you go. So it's shaped all the way around there. Okay. And then what we need to do is now we're going to open this up, making sure that there is our line. Okay. We're going to open it up. You can pin this bit if you want to. I haven't been pinning it. I've just been, been sewing it. But you pop that in there. Pin your next bit on. 
Now the only reason I'm doing it is to keep it steady. When I'm sewing it, and I will show you, it will stay um, with the with the machine. So I'm just pinning it like this. There we go. And now I'm going to bring in the other camera and we're going to sew. You can see that line here. We're going to sew all the way around there. Now, what I did this time is I made sure that I've got, and I'll show you on this one, the reason that you can see it is I've got that brown in the top because I really wanted to make sure that you could see it. Another tip I will give you about binding. So here is a, I think this is called a royal blue. But if you look at my thread, now I've matched this up as perfectly as I could. Threads can be expensive, but if you get the primary colours and then get a colour lighter and then darker, then you will have the perfect thread for lots of your fabrics. But if you're doing some binding, we don't do binding all the time. If you're doing some binding, I would say go and buy a colour thread that is perfectly matched, as, as close as you can get it. When I made my the Japanese bag, I matched up the colour perfectly, okay? So make sure you match it up. Let me show you on the other camera because hopefully you're not going to be able to see this. The whole point is, can you see that? The idea is that you can't see that. So if you're using this thread when you are sewing your binding, another way to make it brilliantly, just, just so that it's perfect, if you want it perfect, is to match up your colour perfectly. Now you will have this colour and you can use it when you're, instead of using black and instead of using a darker colour, you can probably use this colour again, although you won't be using it a lot for this project. But if you want to use, if you want binding that is going to be invisible, that is one of the ways to do it, is to match your thread perfectly. When I sew this, as I've already said, I've got a dark brown, it's almost a coppery colour in there, because I'm doing it because I want you to see it. Don't use copper when you're sewing on white fabric, okay? That's that's a good tip you can take home. Right, let's bring in the sewing machine again. There we go. And I'm just going to bring the other one down. Oh, I do love this camera. It's those of you that have, have gone back and watched old videos and you've gone to see what we've done previously, you will see I only had one camera and it happened to be my my iPhone. I've obviously got a newer iPhone now and it just makes all the difference having these different camera angles for you. It's so lovely. So here is my fabric. Now I am going to take my pins out. It's up to you what you do. You find what works for you, but I just find my pins are in the way. There's my lovely copper thread and I'm lining up this side and I'm going to, going to sew down there. Needle down. So I'm not lining this up with the outside. I'm lining it up. There is my needle. There is the arrow and I want to sew on here. And I take it really, really slowly. Needle down. My foot pedal is dancing. Needle down. Back stitch, and then just follow that line all the way through. What you can do is you could draw over that line if you found that it wasn't as clear to you, then you could draw it in with the light shining on it now. It isn't as clear as it could be where that line is. So I'm just turning lining up my binding with the edge. The whole reason that you use bias binding is that it does this. If you had a straighter piece of fabric now that you didn't cut across the grain, what would happen is this would not be twisting at all. You can see I'm able to turn it into a curve. Moving that down. Just take it slow. If you wanted to really test your binding skills once you've had a few goes, then sew a, uh, a pot holder that is a perfect circle. And honestly, you will, you will <laughs> it'll probably take two hours, like I did, and sew it really slowly. But it will be perfect. 
handy. And while we've got this close up, so can you see it's 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 perfectly curved now. And then we're going to bring in the iron and do some more pressing. But there you go. And this is what I wanted the fiskers for, is to be snipping this bit. Let's move the machine and we'll bring in the other camera. There we go. Where did I put it? Lost it again. There it is. I'm just going to move this up out of the way. And then you can see using this one. There we go. Right, I'm going to bring in my mat again. Now, my wall mat is one of my favourite purchases of this year. Um, my little iron as well. But I think the wall mat I love even more because I could be using my big iron if I wanted to. There is our binding. What we need to do now is to snip some of this away. Right, I'm going to move. That out of the way so you can see. I'm going to bring in my bigger scissors because again, the more I use my snips, the the less sharp they're going to be. There's quite a lot of fabric there. Not wanting to. Now if any of this looks a struggle, it's because I'm trying to show you for the camera angle. I don't want my Sort of where you can see that I'm not cutting things as smooth or as easily. I don't want you to take that home with you and think, right, it's hard to do binding because it isn't. The only reason I'm struggling is because I'm trying to show you for the camera. There we go. And then we need to take it, the snips in here. Let's see if they'll work. I think we've already tested them enough, haven't we? No. I think I need to get Steve to get his whetstone out. The trouble here now, as I showed you with the first one, is I'm worried that we're going to be cutting that thread and we do not want to. And we don't want to cut into our binding. There we go. Now I have two, I have another one already prepped, ready to show you that it isn't a fluke and it does work every time. Now we've got the rest of our pocket here. And what we need to do is fold this over that way turn it back because this is the side that's going to be seen and then use your iron and iron it all flat and this little iron is amazing for this because if I had the big iron in here, it's just so cum cumbersome. Is that the right word? There we go. So you can see that's a perfect one. But I wanted to show you it isn't just, this is the same method, different fabrics. It does work. And the trick is using your iron, taking your time. There you go. So it isn't just, you can see. And now what you need to do, so this is going to be our pocket and this is our front. We're gonna take this bit off. I'm gonna cut that here. I'm gonna cut that here. And I hope that has answered the question. It was Susan's question. I hope that has helped you and, and all of you if you haven't done binding before. Now, what we're going to do, I'm gonna lay this on here I'm not going to sew this permanently because what I'm ha I want to do is I put another strip on here. But I will pin it on and then I will show you how the pocket works. There we go. There's a couple of more minutes left of the demo. If you want to uh, answer the question, if you're late, not late, if you weren't here at the beginning, it sounds like I'm the school mom, doesn't it? Um, if if you weren't at the here at the beginning, can you let us know what you use for snipping your threads? Because we would like to know how, not snipping your threads, snipping into your curve, something that you would use a very sharp pair of scissors for. Let us know what make you've got. That I can go and maybe buy another pair. 
So there we go. My pocket, that's quite white, isn't it? My pocket is on. And what I will do now is I will sew down here and then sew all the way around. Let me show you close up. There we go. So what I would do is I will sew across here. This was our opening for our bagging out. You could put some binding across there if you wanted to, but I'm going to sew across here, down here with a white thread so that you won't see it. And then what you can do, we haven't sewn our binding obviously, but what I would do with my binding is I would then sew with a colour that matches here, or I would sew on that white bit, making sure all of your binding is folded behind. If you fold, if you sew in here in the ditch, that's what that's called, then you won't be able to see it. And then this is my pocket. Thank you ever so much for watching today. The reason I pause then is because I remembered what we're going to do on Monday. We are going to make a pot holder. I've had a request from my husband to make a pot holder. The one thing he uses the most that I have sewn is the pot holder that I made for the... I can't remember how long ago it was, but it was it's quite a while ago. I, I will go back and have a look. It's it, I'm sure it's almost two years ago. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a pot holder. As you can imagine, this is going to be the pot holder part. And then all I'm going to do is make this longer. And then what you do is you put your hand in there and then you can fold it to, to hold pots. So that will be Monday's tutorial. So we will have more binding. If you want to practice yours and then come back and have a bit of a sew along, but we will be making some pot holders to match our Jubilee fabrics. Thank you ever so much for joining us today, everyone. And I will see you on Monday at 7pm. Bye.